my lovely and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to do a little walkthrough of my Hobonishi Cousin. This is the first time I've ever used this and I've done a little bit of trial and error. So I wanted to show you the different things that I've been doing on my weekly spread and my daily spread to hopefully give you some inspiration on how to use your Hobonishi Cousin or to give you a few ideas if you're in the market and thinking of getting your own. So let's just jump right in. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Seppi and I share with you simple and practical tips to live a happier life. And one of those things is my journals and planners. So if you're interested, make sure to subscribe because that really helps support my channel. And this is my Hobonishi Cousin that I've been using since January. Um, I have been really loving it and it took me a little bit of time to figure out how I like using it so I thought I would show you a little bit of um, inside my Hobonichi Cousin to show you the different things that I tried on my daily spread. Um, as you can see here I have some cute little stickers. This is from the Coffee Monsters Co. Um, her stuff is super cute so if you don't know her shop, her sticker shop, I would definitely encourage you to check it out. Um, so in my first page, I just um, use some of her stickers, nothing too crazy. I keep these emoji um, sticker sheet at the front of my Hobonishi just in case I want to use it. But I kept this kind of simple, maybe next year I'll do a little bit more elaborate. Um, but I figured I would keep it simple because I did get a little bit overwhelmed when it came to breaking this in and figure out how to use it. Um, I think that next year I will definitely stick to getting the same one and I will do a little bit more elaborate first pages. So as you can see here, it's very simple. I did use the yearly overview to put, plug in some important dates like birthdays, some celebrations, some like weddings and stuff. and. I use this every single month to look at it um, when I plan the month ahead and if I know that something's coming up that I write it out here that way when I actually sit down to plan the month um, to do the monthly overview then I have a good idea of what to expect etc so I've been using that quite simply I know that some people use it as a step tracker workout tracker um, mood tracker as well which I like the idea of um, I'm not sure next year what I would use it for but I find that this was very useful to have um, an idea of what to expect on the different months, that way I can plan ahead a little bit. Then I ha then you have the uh, monthly overview, which at the beginning of every single month I do sit down and I plan the month ahead. That way I have a better idea of how busy or how not busy the month is. That way if I know, for example, there's different things planned on the weekend, try to give myself a little bit of a free weekend before or after. Um, I know my paydays, different bills, etc. So I like to plan the month ahead just to have a good overview of it. This is this month, um, you know, putting some of the days off that I had, etc. I didn't do anything too themed. Um, I like to make it a little bit prettier, but I do need to make it a bit more functional and not spend as much time planning because I do have a lot of planners and journals and I will be making a video of my updated planner and journal lineup if you're interested to see how I use all my different planners and journals. But this is just a monthly overview to see what to expect, birthdays, schedule, uh, planning and everything else. Um, so every single week when I sit down to do my weekly overview and my weekly plans, I pull this out and it gives me a good idea of, it just reminds me of the di different things that are coming ahead. So that's how I use the monthly overview, very straightforward. And then the weekly overview is something I really always want in a planner. Again, if I know what to expect the week ahead, it gives me a better idea of how to plan myself when it comes to my workout, when it comes to my downtime, etc. to try and not overwhelm my schedule too much. I have switched up a little bit how I use my weekly schedule, so I'm going to show you a little bit. This was the first time that I used it. Um, just to give you perspective, I have a 9 to 5 job and I also have a business that I work about 20 hours a week on, so I have a lot that gets packed into my schedule. So I found that I was initially using my Hobonishi weeks as my planner and I will make a separate video on that on how I switched up because this was way too small for me. So I'm using this as my health tracker instead. Um, however, 
so this is the first time I used the weekly overview and the way I was doing it is if there was specific so this was my business to-do list and this was my general to-do list and then every single day I kind of liked doing following what Helen does from the Coffee Monsters Co which do like a little bit of a tracking what you've done every single day but I realized it wasn't sustainable for me so I kind of stopped that but I thought it was super cute the way she does it where throughout the day you plug in what you're doing it's like a memory keeper as well but unfortunately with my schedule I don't think that's realistic so that was the first time I used it but I did like I had enough space um to just see the weekly overview etc and then the week after I added a work tracker just because I get a little bit overwhelmed if I feel as though I'm not working enough on my business but then I use this simple tracker to track like for a little half hour um chunks of time to see how much I actually work on my business and that just helps reassure me that even though it's like half an hour here half an hour there I am working slowly on my business so that's why I have this here and then I have my weekly schedule and again I tried doing this cutesy little like um daily tr daily memory keeper of like what I did etc but I don't think that I'm going to keep that up because it's just too much between my bullet journal and my journals and stuff and then I kept this week a little bit more simple, as you can see. Um, I also stopped using washi. I find that with this kind of, it's actually not that bad depending on the washi you're using, but the pa the paper is great. I love it. You can use it with so many different pens and it's great with, um, it's great with a Tombow, what's it called? The Tombow Fenty pen for, um, for like the calligraphy so it's like a, it's a great paper however I find that when you put like washi tape it kind of like kind of like bends the it, you can, I don't know if you can see it here it bends the paper a little bit so I don't like that a whole lot so I don't know if I'll be using too much washi tape moving forward this was a more of a simple week because it was just really busy I had my period so I wasn't feeling very well um and now I'm slowly starting to find a rhythm. I feel as though I like having a weekly overview with my little work tracker and just the limit it, limit my to-do list to just the priorities. Um, that has really helped me be a lot more mindful of not overloading my schedule. And if ever there's something that has to get done that day, then I will write it down. Otherwise, I will not. I try to just plan my day a little bit more simple by using the daily spread so I will show you that after as well um, and then again this was a bit more of a simple we didn't have as much time to decorate and that's okay and this I think I'm pretty much getting my own this is kind of how moving forward I'm going to keep it like I said that a, a weekly overview if there's anything specific then I write it down the priorities of the things I have to get done and then I put a little section here of like the things I need to remember for next week and my work tracker as well and this is this week as you can see it is kind of the same thing and I feel as though keeping things simple sometimes is also a little bit better because it's easier to keep up with it because if it's too complex if there's too many things happening then I will not stick to it I've also loved creating these little um de de decorative it's like instead of washi tape I just use my I use, just use a midliner highlighter and then I use a tiny uh, pen to decorate these little stars as like a little page break and just to give a little bit of decor. I have really enjoyed doing that and you'll see in my daily spreads I have been doing the same thing. And this is, by the time I watch this video it's probably going to be this week or the week after but I already prepared um, the spread for next week and again I've done the same thing and I've starting to add a few little stickers from the Coffee Monsters Co and then I can add in my to-do list but this is kind of the spread that I'm going to be using it as because it feels less overwhelming to not have to plug in write things every single day um, and to have a shorter to-do list and to track my work as well so this is I think what I'm going to be continuing doing using my weekly spreads so this is more of a tangible weekly schedule they don't have the monthly the weekly as well and then when it comes so as you can see i didn't get my hobonichi until the end of jan so then january is all empty and unfortunately i feel like such a waste um but then here is how i started using so i did add little tabs here for every single month that way so then you have like february march etc i found that this helps kind of be able to um 
flip through the jur the, the planner. So I'm gonna show you how I started the different renditions of my daily spread. So I was I had a dilemma of not knowing whether to use um, my bullet journal for my daily journaling, which is what I initially started doing at the beginning of the year, whether to use my Midori for my daily journal or whether to use my Hobonichi. So I will show you the evolution of how I played around with the Hobonichi cousin daily spread. So initially I wasn't sure am I going to just use this little part here where you have the schedule for the just the schedule and then I have my to-do list for um, my business. This is also that I flipped it around a little bit for my business some self care to make sure I mindful of that every single day. But then I also have a tracker and I use my Hobonishi weeks. So then this became a bit redundant. Then I have my daily, you know, to do lists and tasks and stuff. Wasn't crazy about this, but I just felt like a lot of wasted space and I don't like that at all. So I continued a little bit. I tried to be a little bit more specific. Again, I wanted to do um, daily little gratitude. This is to-do list for my business, my self-care, life stuff to do, and my schedule. And then it just, again, it became a little bit too overwhelming. Didn't really like it. Felt like it was just redundant to have a tracker here, a tracker in my Hobonishi Weeks, a tracker in my bullet journal. It's just like too many things to track. And it's just, I'm tracking the same thing. Then moving on to February, um, I continued kind of with the same thing, but I was just kind of figuring it out. Maybe try keeping it a little bit more simple, but this just feels a bit too chaotic for me. Didn't like it very much. Then I tried making it a little bit more artsy, decorative, but this again, it felt just like too many things and then a lot of wasted space. Um, then again, it was also the weekend, but this is another effort, another one that I tried by having priorities of my life to-do list and then my business to-do list and anything extra I put in the bonus sessions if I get it done great if not then it's okay that way mentally I can just focus on a top three but again I just didn't really like even how it looks I just don't like it and this is also like a reality check that you don't have to have pretty journals or beautiful spreads all the time that we all go through <laughs> uglier spreads or spreads that are not as nice and that's just Ooh, the reality of life and it's okay I like doing my journaling as kind of a hobby as well I mean at the end of the day it is going to be something that is going to be more practical to help me stay organized so if some days I don't have time to make it look pretty then that's just what it is because at the end of the day it's also more functional than anything else um, and then I'm slowly starting to find a little bit of a rhythm because I realized I did like writing my just my daily journaling like morning evening etc um I continue with the to-do list but again I just felt like it was like too much because this was my you know life to-do list and the bonus business to do this and then the bonuses and then the next three so if ever I've done the top three the priorities that I have to get done then I focus on the next top three that I have to do which I like the concept because I tend to overdo and do too much. But again, it was just too chaotic. Didn't really like it. Then I'm slowly starting to find my rhythm. Firstly, I love, so you'll see in March, um, I kept the same color, using the same color. And then February, I ended up just continuing with one color. So I like the idea of having one color and I've been using fountain pens and I have different ones so it's really fun to just use one fountain pen uh, maximize the ink and just anyway all that to say I like theming every single month with one color fountain pen so that's what I'm going to keep doing moving forward <laughs> but this is how I think I found my rhythm doing my daily journaling where I just write whatever's going on morning evening afternoon whatever I pull out my journal that way it's just whatever I need it to be I need I can use it as journal journaling space and then I use my to-do list and my business to-do list and anything that comes up during the day that I just need to write I put it down this is what I mentioned there are some days that are just uglier and that's okay <laughs> um so I just want to like kind of 
um, normalize that because it's easy to look at like beautiful spreads and be like, oh, I want to do that every day, but it's not always realistic. And I am an avid journaler, so I just want to remove that pressure from you. But see, I'm finding a little bit of a rhythm here. So I didn't have a to-do list because I'm trying to also learn not to always have a to-do list. But as you can see, now I kind of find the same rhythm. I have my daily, um, my daily uh, journaling, and if there's a to-do list, then I write it down here. And that's kind of how I'm moving forward now. Um, I like, like I said, I like the, I hate having empty spaces. It just feels like a waste. But I love having um, themed uh, months. So I'm gonna do that moving forward, I think. My daily to-do list, business to-do list, and I'm also starting to track manifestation, things that are happening throughout the day to encourage me to remind myself that I am manifesting things that I want. Um, and to keep going. So as you can see, it's kind of the same. Some days I don't have a to-do list, especially on the weekend, giving myself a little bit of space. And this is current month, March, current, the current month. And as you can see, I have kind of stuck to the same thing. Um, I like, this is the current color that I'm using. It is called Steel Blue and it is amazing. It just, the color is so beautiful, especially when you write it. You write, it's just like drill worthy, but anyway. Um, I'm just kind of sticking to the same routine and I really like it a lot. Um, if I don't have a to-do list and that's okay, like this day I think I was at the office so then by the time I get home there's not much time to write a to-do list anyway. But I still do my daily journaling. So that's kind of how I'm sticking to it, very simple. Um, daily journaling, to-do list, business to-do list and any tracking that I want to do in terms of manifestation and I'd like still to do my little star um little decoration etc so that is how i'm going to be using my obonichi cousin every single day um i might switch it up if i feel start feeling bored with it but overall i have been loving it um so yeah i have loved been, lo been loving my hobonichi cousin i will likely stick to the same thing next year um so i have been really enjoying this journal a lot the paper is great the for the size is really great i don't feel like i'm too constricted etc etc love it a lot i am going to be doing an updated hobonichi weeks uh overview because i started using this firstly as my planner and now I'm just using it as my health tracker. So if you're interested in that, make sure to check out the video where I'll do a little bit more of a walkthrough of the Hobonishi Weeks. So that way maybe you can get an idea of which one you want to buy between the cousin and the weeks. And I am also going to be sharing an updated lineup of all my journals and planners because like I said, I have a lot and the way that I started the year has changed. But here we are, so I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions specifically about the Hobonichi Cousin or if you have any comments or suggestions on how I can improve. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps support my channel as I'm trying to grow it slowly but surely. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching and have a beautiful day. Bye for now.